Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on the time and location you are tuning to these are uh, UAG Grand Disbursement Update. Now, a date for disbursement has been dropped and it's coming from one man. This uh, Mr. Onji Olivia. Uh, it's, I like the man because most sometimes he gives a, a very good analysis. But sometimes, I don't know, I don't know. Sometimes he just sits up and cooks up stories and... Uh, time passes and we don't even get to see what he said so he has dropped another update that uh, the date of disbursement anyway i just want you to listen to his analysis and um, take home what you want to take home drop the the the, the your comment in the description but we pray that uh, his rumor or his analysis is correct because all of us what we need is this money you know Oh, what oh, oh, we need is this money. So he is giving the date, saying that the date of disbursement is after Salapu. So let's just listen to what he has to say. Let's listen to his source and where he's getting the information from. Please remember to subscribe to our channel. Push the red, uh, push the subscription button and the notification button. See you at the other end. This week is going to be the final next week in the ecosystem. Before we delve deep into the subject of critical concern in this session we wish to apologize for the distorted audio quality of our last video the distortedness was as a result of natural forces the wind we are dealing in a quite noisy world noisy world where natural sounds like wind distorts video recordings even as noise causes the suspension of disbursement of the UAAG grant. Yeah, that's true. You might have heard when there was a, a news circulating that disbursement was suspended because the alert will create noise in the country, distracting the Muslim from their fasting. We will look into this in the later chapters of this video. But for this session, in the first part, I wish to review some Comment in this channel, Om Julivia TV channel. Comment by our subscribers and non-subscribers who happen to cross paths with our video in one of the social media platforms. Some of these comments are constructive in nature while some of them are unconstructive or destructive in entirety. It's undisputed that Everyone is entitled to their own individual opinion. But sometimes when you look at the content of this criticism, it's purely unimaginable. It's purely unconstructive and discouraging to people like us that take the pains of sourcing for this information and presenting it to the public domain. All to encourage grant subscribers and our esteemed members on this channel to keep them abreast of realities in the ecosystem. I wish to state that all these informations that we use to project on this channel is not fabricated by us. It's actually strong feedbacks from authorities in the ecosystem. By God's grace, our status has granted us access to authorities either in the grant ecosystem or the CBN and other institutions in Nigeria that gain us access to first-hand information. When we present this information just as we receive from these authorities, for some reasons that this information doesn't come to reality doesn't mean it was fabricated or ungenuine or unauthenticated. There are quite facts emanating from authoritarian sources. Remember in the same ecosystem, there was a time where the verification and screening exercise was scheduled and later adjourned. And the period we presented the date of the first verification before the adjournment. The adjournment did not in any way signify that there was no such schedule for verification in the first instance. This is the same scenario that is playing down in all the timelines we have been revealing to you in the ecosystem. For, for example, the factor of money dropping into the grant handler account for disbursement was actually a feedback of strong authority from top influential personalities at the side of the government and in the grant ecosystem. Some of you were quite witness of 
authorities like Power of Five, the Chief of Google, and other top management staff of the UAAG in a video dancing in excitement after the money was secured. For some reasons that it was debunked by the country director doesn't in any way imply that Om Julebia TV did not have those informations on strong authority. Then what is our offense when we pass information that are meant to be classified to you as an attempt to keep you encouraged in the whole grant activity? Aware that one who is misinformed is deformed. They may tell you that the UAAG disbursement will take place on Thursday or Friday. It is the same day that the grant handler were invited to appear in the CBN and receive a check. That is the same day that the national broadcast was scheduled and we were opportune to have access to this information. We presented it to our subscribers to arm them with current progresses that are established in the ecosystem. If for any reason such arrangement was cancelled, that doesn't in any way imply the news was fabricated by Home Julivia. Some of you who are close to authority are aware of this fact I'm saying. You. We are aware of so many stakeholders who have already traveled from their respective states to Abuja on Thursday and Friday. All an attempt to give the necessary support to the UAAG and the AGPG and to usher in disbursement to everyone. But as we all know, we are living in a world where the expectation of today can be intercepted by other realities tomorrow. What is a reality today becomes unreality in hours away. Those arrangements were adjourned to the new way. As forward-thinking people we all are, when there is adjournment of debt or activities, doesn't imply the people are not serious or not taking the plight of the masses into consideration. If the grant handlers schedule disbursement for Thursday, the same external bodies who schedule this disbursement activity call them and cancel it. Then the grant handlers or promoters aren't the reason for such cancellation or failure. It is incumbent on us to show understanding and adjourn our thinking to the new development too. Instead of criticizing, smearing the character and blackmailing this grant handler. These are the same people we are expecting grants from to help us access the resources to build exciting lives for ourselves and our family. It's an undisputed fact that grants is going to be disbursed by the grant handler. But we have to show understanding. We have to behave like leaders too. We have to be faithful followers, not to blaspheme the same leaders that we expect much more from. The grant handler are simply projecting a non-governmental body. They are not the federal government of Nigeria. We understand that the times are quite hard. People barely consume three squares in a day. The federal government of Nigeria is still out there and this is the non-governmental body seeking for ways to intervene in the hard realities confronting Nigerians. Therefore, we still need to exercise some level of reservation of our expectation on these grant organizations, aware that it is the responsibility of the federal government of Nigeria to provide the basic needs of her citizenry. So if these grant bodies are, are putting their neck on the line, sacrificing unavailable resources to bring about disbursement, we should show a level of encouragement to these bodies. The grant we are expecting will be disbursed. That is undisputed. In reality, we are aware of the key players and stakeholders who are pioneering and frontiering the disbursement of this grant. If there was no grant to be disbursed, we would see uh, legal luminaries, doctors, senators, top governmental representatives as stakeholders in this grant, helping to facilitate the disbursement of this grant to everyone. 
if there was no grant to this boss, you won't see people leaving their homes. Strong entrepreneurs, people who have strong businesses running in their respective states, abandoning those businesses for the past seven to eight months, staying in Abuja, moving from one office to the next, all to ensure there is disbursement of UAAG grants. They keep intimating us that disbursement of grants by this perspective, the disbursement of grants in Nigeria of this propensity, of this high status, haven't taken place before. There was no particular laid down structures for grant handlers to access to bring about disbursement. It is on the realization of one of the arrangements before the awareness of the next one to embark on. We need to show understanding to this grant handler while they work to bring about disbursement. To everyone who believe UAAG have no grants to disburse, believe it, UAAG have grants to disburse and they will disburse it to Nigerians in the shortest time possible. It's quite true that it has been adjournment of disbursement, adjournment, adjournment, and adjournment. But pray that this week is going to be the final week for disbursement of this grant. Let's look at indices, realistical indices for disbursement of this grant this week. Meanwhile, we were intimated that disbursement was adjourned last week because of the fasting Muslim brothers. It's quite funny that disbursement was adjourned because Muslims were fasting. Because we know that these Muslim brothers seek this money to buy ram and break their fast. They will need the money to buy rice and other valuables, even to build their businesses after the fasting. So why should disbursement of grants stop or intercept their fasting? In the other way around, we understand that some of those authorities frontiering the disbursement of these grants are Muslim faithful in the sense that leaving their fasting to move from one office to the next to execute disbursement will seem as a distraction to them. Some spiritualists take this spiritual activity so paramount than everything else and we understand that some core Muslims don't like intercepting their faith with material factors. Even when there is a deceased fellow in their room, they prepare leaving the corpse to achieve the spiritual cause. This is extremes where people practice religion, placing God first over other material factors. That is the dimension I'm seeing it. So if the grant handler were saying that the disbursements were adjourned because those that are supposed to execute it are fasting, and they don't want their concentration to be distracted from the spiritual activity they are engaging, then there's nothing wrong with us accepting that information and adjourning our thinking to the new debt that is kept for everyone. This is leadership. This is faithful followership, not criticism. I've seen jestful comments across the WhatsApps and Telegram groups, people criticizing the decisions or the concept of adjournment or disbursement due to fasting of Muslim brothers. The reality is we should always be future going, forward thinking. If it is next week they are scheduling, which is this new week we are standing, then all our thinking and concentration should be looking up to the development that is going to unfold in the new week. We were told that the Muslims are breaking their fast on Tuesday. Disbursement may start on that same Tuesday. But looking again at the calendar of April, when Muslims break their fast on Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday is a public holiday. Then what is the possibility of disbursement taking place on a holiday Wednesday and Thursday? To me, technically, 
next week is out of disbursement except the grant handler have other arrangements to engage the banks on holiday yes there are occasions where if you have adequate financial resources you can engage the banking staff and pay them heavily to engage in off hours assignments so if there is an arrangement i'm not saying that the new week which was uh, scheduled for disbursement on tuesday or wednesday is not going to be realistic i'm trying to be practical going by past antecedents where holidays are used as reasons to adjourn disbursement if there is holiday in tuesday and wednesday and the grant handler have a special arrangement with the banking representatives then disbursement can still take place even in the holiday i'm aware that the federal government always pay the workers or make the transfers of their locations on weekends where there is a reduction in traffic in the banking gateways even commercial banks like transferring salaries on holiday period and weekends the way there is stable network activity on the channels therefore help with a very organized special engagement with the banks disbursement can take place on the wednesday and thursday holiday aware that this will be a more stable period for the alerts to drop without failing most often when money is transferred on busy working periods most of the alerts will fail if out of 180 may get through successfully while the remaining one will be re-engaged therefore the holiday is even an advantage for the grant handler to seize it and ensure seamless transactions let's be hopeful and prayerful that this should finally happen in our time but if for any reason the two days holiday in the new week will be used as an excuse to adjourn the enforcement to next week then let's all of us equally show understanding too just as we show understanding in last week where they said the alert will cause muslim faithfuls to start traveling from one state to another to disperse the grants to their own subscribers that alerts will cause noise in the whole country and muslims don't like noise if we show understanding in that last week let's equally show the same understanding in this new week we are approaching ultimately what we are aware is that the grant is already there waiting to be disbursed and the approval to disburse the grant have all been issued it's just a minute of command from the authority to the grant handler to start effecting the alert to the ngo ceo's account in this light i'm tipping off all ngo ceos who don't have their one bundle set up to be uploaded in the app to go and get their bundles ready Some NGO accounts are still invalid right now. Make sure you transfer money into that account and withdraw, including the beneficiaries. I've seen in our organization where bundle heads, now recipients, are providing account details that are invalid. Please, before you provide an account number to your CEO for disbursement, first test run attempt to transfer money to that account to ensure it is still valid. Sometimes when you insert the account name, it pops up the bank. Then confirm if the beneficiary name attached to your account number is correct. I've seen scenarios where they provide FCMB bank to a Zenit bank account. And when you match FCMB, it shows invalid bank. In such a case, if it is in the bank where disbursement is taking place, such account number will be removed and another beneficiary name inserted instantly then such a beneficiary will lose out of this disbursement. Please run your account and ensure the correctness and validity before presenting it to your NGOs. Then the NGOs, test run the validity and activeness of your bank account number. Some bank rush to open accounts for this NGO 
and did not collect adequate documents to activate such accounts and the headquarters of the banks are closing down or deactivating these accounts or invalidating them from receiving alert. Monday as it's breaking is another opportunity to ensure you provide those documents to keep your account in an active state to receive alerts. All what we are at the moment is alert dropping in the ecosystem and it is happening in the shortest time possible. We are aware of all the progresses and the authorities that are standing with the grant handler to ensure this disbursement takes place. And after this disbursement, there are myriads of disbursements that is going to take place. Therefore, it is not just the UAAG grant being disbursed to Nigerians. It is about the UAAG grant disbursement, paving way for the disbursement of accumulating grants in Nigeria. It is a new beginning for everyone in the ecosystem in this country. And we trust that God is going to use the AGPGN and UAAG Apostle Ambassador Dr. Ken Wakama to alter the narratives of disbursement of grants in this country. Let's continue to hold them in our prayers in the morning and night to be more spiritual in this time. This is the time that temptation do set in more than any time else. At the hour where you are about gaining breakthrough, it is the time that the people from the elemental kingdom always fight to intercept such strong breakthroughs. We have to be more sensitive at this moment. Those that are expecting this grant as CEO, you have to be more security conscious at this moment. The beneficiaries have to be more security sensitive, more security instinctive. The, it's what they call security instinct. This is a time the uh, hackers hack accounts and exhaust everyone's account. The banks have to be more proactive in this time in protecting their accounts because hackers, professional hackers who can break any codes are already out there. Yesterday, one particular number called my friend and asked him if he's holding an account in FCMB. He said yes. He asked him if there's an other account he's maintaining with other banks too that they have seen his BBN. They called his name, the three names, that they first wish him congratulations for going to receive the sum of 400,000 Naira and ask him if he holds accounts with other banks which he obliged and they asked him to provide the name of the bank. He did. The caller insisted that they are not going to use FCMB to effect the transfer, but they can use Diamond Access and other banks. Immediately he provided this other bank, apart from the FCMB, the hackers code. They forwarded a code to him and asked him to forward the code back to them. Hence, they can effect the transfer to his account. In the excitement of going to receive 400,000, if he did not call me, he almost forwarded that code. He actually called to confirm if the disbursement is taking place, if it is my bank that are calling him to send the code to receive the alert, which I quickly told him that it is not from us. Imagine if he did not call me to confirm if the code is from us and forwarded the code back to them. His banking account should have been taken over. Perhaps they will not flush the money in his account instantly, but they will keep that account in incubation, waiting for when reasonable assets will enter. Then they will evacuate or flush everything in it. Security instincts is what we need to survive the hacker's plan for all of us. So my people, you have listened to Mr. Orange Olivia. People are really at his neck. People are really attacking him for for the news is passing and he has already committed himself again he has said that there will be disbursement next week uh, and uh, let us just be hopeful although he said that there's possibility of wednesday thursday holidays so probably to be upper week but he categorically said that the uh, uag people have received the money and there will be disbursement though from our source our source say that they have received the money, but there was no date of disbursement. But Mr. Angel Olivia is giving us date of disbursement. So let's guys be hopeful. Let us be hopeful that uh, next week, upper week, we'll get this money. Definitely, it will pass this month. So guys, see you on next update.